Stay, madam. I must talk a word with you. I have no more sons of the royal blood for thee to slaughter. You have a daughter. <laughs> Called Elizabeth. Virtuous and fair, royal and gracious. And must she die for this? So let her live and I'll slander myself as false to Edward's bed. No, 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 wrong not her birth. She, she is a royal princess. <laughs> to save her life, I'll say she's not so. Her life is safest only in her birth. <laughs> and only in that safety died her brothers. My babes were destined to a fairer death of grace and blessed thee with a fairer life. Speak as if this I had slain my cousin. Cousin, indeed. And by their uncle cousin of comfort, kingdom, kindred, freedom, life. <coughs> my tongue should to thy ears not name my boys, till that my nails were anchored in thine eyes. Madam, so thrive I in my enterprise, and, and dangerous success of bloody wars, as I intend more good to you and yours than ever you or yours by me were harmed. What good? is covered with the face of heaven to be discovered that can do me good. The advancement of your children, gentle lady. Up to some scaffold there to lose their heads. Be not so hasty to confound my meaning. I, I mean that with my soul I love thy daughter and do intend to make a queen of England. Well then, who dost thou mean shall be her king? Even he that makes a queen, who should be else? What thou? Even so, how think you of it? How canst thou woo her? Now that's... That would I learn of you. Send to her by the man that slew her brothers a pair of bleeding hearts. Thereon engrave Edward and York. Then haply will she weep. Tell her thou mayst away her uncle Clarence, her uncle Rivers. I and for her sake mayst quick conveyance with her good aunt Anne. Madam, you mock me. This is not the way to win your daughter. There is no other way! Unless thou couldst put on some other shape and not be Richard that had done all this. Look. What is done cannot be now amended. <laughs> men. Men. Men shall deal unadvisedly sometimes. <laughs> which after hours gives leisure to repent. If I did take the kingdom from your sons to make amends, I'll give it to your daughter. The loss you have is but a son being king, and by that loss your daughter is made queen. I cannot make you what amends I would, therefore accept such kindness as I can. <laughs> go then, dear mother, to thy daughter go. Make bold her bashful years with your experience, and prepare her ears to hear a wooer's tale. And after this arm of mine hath chastised the petty rebel, dull-brained Buckingham, Bound with trumpet garlands will I come, and lead thy daughter to a conqueror's bed, to whom I'll retail my conquest won, and she shall be sole victorious. Caesar's Caesar. What? What were I best to say? Her father's brother would be her lord, or he that slew her uncles and her brothers, or, or, or what? Under what title shall I woo for thee? Say that she shall be a high and mighty queen. To veil the title as her mother doth. I say that I will love her everlasting. How long will that title ever last? As long as heaven and nature lengthens it. As long as hell and Richard likes of it. Oh, your reasons are too shallow and too oh, quick. Oh, no! My reasons are too deep and dead for infants in their graves. Now by my George, my gut, and my crown. The fiends dishonored in the third usurp. I swear. I'm I nothing! For this is no oath. If something thou wouldst swear to be believed, swear then by something that thou hast not wronged. Now by the world! It's full of thy foul wrongs. My father's death. Thy life hath it dishonored. Father, by God! God's wrong is most of all! If thou didst fear to break an oath with him, the imperial medal, circling now thy head had graced the tender temples of my child! Tell me, what canst thou swear by now? The time to come. That thou hast wronged in the time o'erpast. The children live whose parents thou hast slaughtered. The fathers live whose children thou hast butchered. Swear not by the time to come, for that thou hast misused, ere used by time ill used o'erpast.
as I intend to prosper and repent, heaven and fortune bar me happy hours. The opposite, all planets of good luck to my proceeding, if with dear heart's love I tender not thy beauteous princely daughter. In her consists my happiness, and thine. Without her follows to myself, and thee herself, the land, and many a Christian soul, death, desolation, ruin, and decay. It cannot be avoided but by this. It will not be avoided but by this. Therefore, my mother, I must call you so, be the attorney of my love to her. Plead what I will be, not what I have been, not my desert, but what I will deserve. Shall I be tempted of the devil thus? Aye, if the devil tempt thee to do good. Yet thou didst kill my children! But in thy daughter's womb, I bury them. <laughs> And in that nest of spicery, they will breed selves of themselves to your recomfiture. Shall I go win my daughter to thy will? And be a happy mother by the deed. I go! Bear her my true love's kiss, and so farewell. <laughs> Relenting fool and shallow changing woman. Most mighty sovereign, on the western coast rideth a poisoned navy. Tis thought that Richmond is the admiral, and there they hold expecting but the aid of Buckingham to welcome them ashore. Some lightfoot friend toast the Earl of Sutton. Radcliffe, thyself, or Catesby, where is he? Here, my good lord. Ah. <laughs> Fly thou to the Earl. Post thou to Salisbury, now when thou comest thither. Dull and mindful villain, why stayest thou here and not goest to the Earl? First, mighty sovereign, give me thy highness pleasure. Ah, true, good, good Catesby. Bid him levy straight the greatest strength and power that he can make and meet thee suddenly at Salisbury. I go. What may please you shall I do at Salisbury? Why, what wouldst thou do there before I go? Your Highness told me I should post My mind is changed. <laughs> Sadly, what news with you? None good, my lord, to please you with the hearing. No, none so bad as well may be reported. Oh, hoy day, a riddle! Neither good nor bad! Once more, what news? Richmond is on the seas. There, let him sink and be the seas on him. White livered runagate, what doth he there? I know not, mighty sovereign, but by guess. Well, as you guess. He makes for England, here to claim the crown. Is the chair empty? <laughs> is the sword unswayed? Is the king dead? The empire unpossessed, then tell me, what makes he upon the seas? Unless for that, my liege, I cannot guess. Unless for that it comes to be your liege, you cannot guess. You will revolt and fly to him, I fear. No, no, my lord, therefore mistrust me not. Where is your power then to beat him back? I'll, I'll, I'll go and muster men. Friends, I'll meet your grace where and what time your majesty shall please. So then, and muster men, but leave behind your son, George Stanley. Look, your heart be firm, or else his head's assurance is but frail. So deal with him as I prove true to you. My gracious sovereign, now in Devonshire, Sir Edward Courtney and the haughty prelate, Bishop of Exeter, his elder brother with many more confederates, are now in arms. In Kent, my liege, the Guilfords are in arms, and every hour more competitors flock to the rebels, and their power grows strong. My lord, the army of Greece Out fighting... on you owls! Nothing but songs of death! There, take thou that, till thou bring better news! The news I have to tell me, your majesty, is that by sudden flood and full of water, Buckingham's army is dispersed and scattered. I cry thee mercy. There is my curse to cure that blow of thine. Proclaim reward to him that brings the traitor in. Proclamations hath been made, my lord. My liege. That the Duke of Buckingham is taken, that is the best of news. That the, that the Earl of Richmond is with a mighty force landed at Milford, that is colder tidings. Yes, they must be told. <laughs> While we reason here, a royal battle might be fought and won. <laughs> Someone take order, Buckingham be brought to Salisbury. The rest, march on with me.
Will not King Richard let me speak with him? No, my good lord. Therefore be patient. Hastings and Edward's children, rivers and gray, holy King Henry and thy fair son Edward and all that have miscarried by underhand corrupt foul injustice. Even for revenge mock my destruction. Thus Margaret's curse falls heavy on my neck. When he, quoth she, shall split thy heart with sorrow. Remember, poor Margaret was a prophetess. Come on, lead me, Ratcliffe, to the block of shame. Wrong hath but wrong, and blame the due of blame. Bishop Ely, tell Richmond this from me. That in the sty of the most deadly boar, my son George Stanley is franked up in hold. If I revolt, off goes young George's head. <laughs> the fear of that holds off my present day. But tell me, where is Princey Richmond now? Uh, at Pembroke Bar at Hartford West in Wales. Hide thee to thy lord. Oh, with all, say the Queen, partly consented, he shall espouse Elizabeth, her daughter. Farewell. The Earl of Richmond, my most loving comrades and my most dear friends, bruised underneath the yoke of tyranny, the wretched, bloody, and usurping bore as even now in the century of this isle. In God's name, cheer thee on, courageous friends, to reap the harvest of peace by this one bloody trial of sharp war. Every man's conscience is a thousand men to fight against this guilty homicide. I doubt not that his friends will turn to us. Ha! He hath no friends, but what are friends for fear, which in his dearest need will fly from him? All for our vantage, then in God's name, march! True hope is swift and flies with swallow's wings. Kings it makes gods, and meaner creatures kings. My lord of Norfolk, why look you so sad? My heart is ten times lighter than my heart. Ah, case me! We must have knocks, ah, must we not? We must both give it. Who hath described the number of our traitors? Six or seven thousand is there not Ah, well out! Battalia triples that account! Let's lack no discipline, make no delay, for love tomorrow is a busy day. A weary son hath made a golden set. And by the bright tract of his fiery car gives token of a goodly day tomorrow. Uh, good, Marcus George. Where is Lord Stanley quartered, do you know? His regiment lies half mildly south from the mighty power of the king. If it be not without peril, good Marcus George, give him from me this most needful message. Once more, good night, sweet Marcus George. Uh, come, gentlemen, let us consult upon tomorrow's business. Yes. My lord of Norfolk, hide thee to thy charge, use careful watch. Use trusty sentinels. I warrant you, my lord. So with the love tomorrow, gentle Norfolk. I go, my lord. Catesby. Send for swimming at arms to Stanley's regiment. Bid him bring his power before sunrising, lest his son George fall into the blind cave of eternal night. Uh, fill me a bowl of wine! Give me a watch. <laughs> Saddle white, sorry, for the field tomorrow. Look, 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 my staves be sound, but not too heavy. I have not that alacrity of spirit nor cheer of mind that I was wont to have. Ratcliffe, about the mid of night, come to my tent and help to arm me. Fortune and victory sit on thy helm. All the comfort the good knight can be to thee, noble father-in-law. In brief, so the season bids us be, prepare thy battle early in the morning. I, as I may, that which I would I cannot, with swift advantage will deceive the time and aid thee in this doubtful shock of ours. But. On your side I may not be too forward, lest being seen thy brother, tender George, be executed in his father's sight. Adieu, be valiant, speed well. Uh, good lords, conduct him to his regiment. Uh, once more, good night, kind lords and gentlemen.